Hello everybody, I'm Arden. Welcome to another episode of Minecraft Enigmatica 2 Expert. Today we're going to continue on with Advanced Rocketry. And where we left off was the start up into the space station and the warp core. And that starts with the Advanced Circuit. And the Advanced Circuit requires making an Advanced Circuit plate in the cutting machine, which requires either the precision assembler or the precision laser etcher. The problem is that we can't make the precision laser etcher because it requires advanced circuits. Although it is ultimately the cheaper way to go because it only requires a basic lens instead of an intricate circuit board, which is pretty expensive. It would be eventually cheaper if we did an advanced carpenter, but then I would have to make an advanced carpenter that takes water instead of redstone. And I don't want to spend an hour putting another one of those together. So we're just going to blow a whole bunch of materials because the cost is already negligible. I've already wired up a bunch of carpenters in my AE2 lab for purposes of automating the intricate circuit board. And as you can see here, I can just push a button and it goes. It takes a little bit to run because these take a bit of time to process in the normal carpenter, but I already have one made. The advanced circuit plate also takes redstone alloy grinding balls, which we've made before and are pretty easy to make. It's just silicon and redstone, and I already have that automated, and a normal silicon wafer, which we have tons of. So in these go. And here we go. And now we have the circuit plates that we can put into the cutting machine. And now we have the first step out of the way. The next step up is to build the space station assembler. And while this is a small amount of text and a single little thing, it, the whole process is much more complicated than this. And make sure you pay attention to this red text. This is make sure you have a back of your space station ID chip when you get to that point, because this is absolutely critical. There's a reason it's in red, and it's a reason why it's highlighted in almost any guide you'll find on advanced rocketry, because you uh, do not want to lose your means to get to your space station. So the assembler itself mostly requires a ton of dilithium and titanium, which we have gotten from the moon. We have so much of this, as well as advanced circuits and the rocket assembly machine, which is more titanium. All of this is easily doable at this point. All right, having made the space station assembler, you need to put it next to a launch pad, same as the rocket ship assembler. You can use the same one. I can just remove my rocket from there. Uh, realistically, I probably need to actually expand the size of this launch pad and possibly increase the size of the gantry because these are significantly bigger than rockets. But for now, I'm going to slap it down right here. So looking into the interface, it's basically the same as the rocket one was. You can scan it to verify that it, it's in the correct shape for a space station, and then you can hit the build button to build it. But for now, we're going to ignore this because we have other things we need to build first. Because we need to build most of the rest of the stuff on this side because we need, you know, gravity, oxygen, and the space station ID chip, and the means to get up there. So let's start with the space station ID chip, which is just another linker combined with a basic circuit. Easy peasy. And done. Next up is the oxygen vent, which is mostly just a motor, a fuel tank, and a steel fan. This is all stuff we've made before. This is all pretty easy when you already have the parts made. And then next up with that would be the CO2 scrubber, which we're going to make, but we don't really need because we're already producing oxygen. The CO2 scrubbers are a thing you can attach to to recycle air, or we can just provide it with a full, uh, actual source of oxygen, which I think I might be producing enough to actually supply the base. But we'll have to test it out and see. But since we have to make these anyways, we need uh, carbon collection cartridges and a CO2 scrubber. The cartridges are just a bunch of iron sheets from the rolling machine. And the CO2 scrubber looks almost identical to the last machine, except it's a carbon brick here. All right, another step quickly done. Next, we need to make the gravity controller, which is actually shockingly simple to make and requires a piston for some reason and not, I don't know, I was expecting a singularity or something here, or a black hole thing of a bottle from Britannia, but here we are. So yeah, that's now done too. All right, so it turns out I had enough launch pads just sitting in my uh, storage from Quest Rewards, so I expanded this out to 11 by 11. I'm just gonna leave that up as high as it is now because I'm only gonna build a small one-story module because we don't actually need a ton of space for a space station. The reality is I, I'm just gonna use it as a warp ship long-term and I'm not, not gonna put a ton of stuff on it. It's not like I'm gonna live up there. So uh, I guess I need to go build a space station real fast. All right, so I fought with this for way longer than I probably should have trying to make sure I got this right and I still don't have a clue. Um, I tried to make it pretty, hopefully this actually works. That said, I did add a couple things that I didn't mention previously. We have a docking pad. This tells it where a spaceship can, can land on your uh, station. Otherwise it lands on the origin, which I don't know what that means. And it probably just means that it like attaches to the top or something. I, I don't know, not taking chances, gonna put one right here. 
Uh, I'm using an elevator, which I don't know will actually seal oxygen or not. I might have to double buffer the roof and the floors to fix this, but we will at least try. And inside we have the oxygen vent set up to an ender tank and an entangler porter, as well as a gas charge pad so that I can get oxygen into my suit if we are actually just in trouble here. So I have no idea if this is going to seal or not because looking in the oxygen vent, it says oxygen, oxygen trace, it lights up, but if I break one of the blocks, the oxygen seems to rush out. So I think it's sealed and I think it just, I mean, on earth, so I can't tell if there's no oxygen here or not. So coming in here, you can hit scan just like with the rocket. You do need a satellite bay, which I didn't mention before, which isn't hard to make, as well as your space station ID chip. And you can just hit the scan button and it comes down just like the rocket and scans the structure. Once it finishes, it says ready at the top like it did before because I've already scanned this and you can hit build. Be aware that if you hit build, these blocks are gone forever. It will get shrunk down and pushed into the satellite bay, which you then need to send up with a rocket. There's no way to get these back otherwise until it's already in space. I'm actually hoping everything I'm putting here actually works properly once I do that, but uh, here's cross my fingers. And just like with scanning, it comes down and does the re rescans the whole thing. And when it completes, it is now here in the space station container, as well as the finished space station ID chip. Now that we have the space station prepped to go, we need to go do the satellite builder right here so that we can clone the uh, space station chip. And while it has a couple new looking things in here in the form of the saw blade assembly and the data storage unit, none of it is actually all that hard to make. All right, to make this one work, it's a small multi-block. You have to put it on top of a power input. And then once you've done that, you can take your program chip, put it in the center slot, put another one up here, and right to secondary chip. And now we have a copy of our space station ship. All right, so I've rebuilt the rocket and fueled it up and I've added a satellite bay to it instead of my seat. And if we look inside it here, the satellite bay is where I'm gonna put the uh, space station. And the guidance computer has the earth chip in it. The documentation, if you look into it, says that this is what you want to bring the rocket back because this has to be an unmanned mission. When you start doing manned missions, you're going to want the, the space station chip in instead. Better add the payload before I forget. There is, however, one last thing we need since this is an unmanned mission and the first one we've done. We need a rocket monitoring station, which is just pretty easy to make. None of this is complicated other than the machine structure, which I have a bunch of. And I've set it up right here. And all you have to do is use your linker on it and link it to the rocket. And once you've done that, you do the thing that scares the bejeebus out of me and you hit the launch button. Now that we've hit the launch button, there it goes. And now I have to be worried that it makes it back. You can watch the mission progress from within the monitoring station. You can see it going up and it promptly came back. And the satellite bay is now empty. So now if I swap out the satellite bay from my seat and put my spacesuit back on, we should be able to get up there. Okay, the rocket's all fueled up. Now to do the scary thing of finding how badly I screwed this up. Well, that sure looks like my space station right there. Hopefully this lands properly. And then hopefully it's actually sealed up for oxygen. Well, we made it here safe and sound. Time to pop inside. Okay, and inside, I still don't know if we have oxygen. Let's take off our suit and find out, I guess. Okay, that's pretty conclusive that there is no oxygen in here, so something's breaking the seal. So uh, that's great. Well, at least I can recharge my oxygen so it's not that big of a deal. Let's go outside and work on plan number two though, which is to set up a celestial gateway from Astral Sorcery so we can just easily get to and from here. All right, now that we've got this made, we can now easily travel back and forth to Earth, although I'm gonna go take the rocket back first. I did test the gateway to make sure it worked though, just in case there's some weird issue with the dimension. But uh, that made that easy. I just didn't have the oxygen turned on once I reformed the space station and put it up here. So if you look in the oxygen vent, there's this, Redstone control disabled, that turns it on. Normally it requires a signal. Most people recommend just tossing a lever on thing. It's You can just disable this though. And as is obvious, I'm not dying right now. So, uh, yeah. But this was a good first step and this got us into space. And our next step is to turn this into a warp ship so we can go to the other planets and finish out advanced rocketry. But that's a problem for another day's art. If you found this interesting or entertaining, please consider leaving a like or subscribe. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.